Hey guys, Nate Harris here with Stone River Outfitters. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to tie an olive variation of what is long proven, one of our all-time favorite, and no doubt most productive little soft tackle butt fly patterns for trout, the hatching pupa. Originated right here in New Hampshire by local fly fishing and fly tying legend, and of course close good friend Mr. Ellis Hatch, let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll begin with a high quality 1X or 2X long nymph hook. What I'm using today is Daiichi's 1560 and a size 14. And the thread we'll use is Gordon Griffith's 14 knot shear color olive. We'll start the hatching pupa like we do all of our flies with a standard jam knot placed just behind the hook eye. And of course, once snug, we'll go ahead and rid ourselves of the excess with a quick, careful tug. Next, to create the fly's rib, we'll grab in hand our extra small ultra wire color we'll use today is green. And after snipping a comfortable 3 to 4 inch length, we'll go ahead and secure the wire firmly in place just behind our hook eye using a few tight turns of thread. Once snug, we'll bind our rib smoothly rearward using evenly spaced wraps, continuing until we reach a comfortable stop located just past the hook point's tip. Next, to create the fly's tail, we'll grab a lemon barred wood duck feather and pull from it a nice, small, sparse, even tipped bunch. We'll pre-measure the fibers so that they roughly equal the hook shank's length. And once satisfied, we'll go ahead and tie our tail squarely in place at the hook's rear using a few well-placed tight turns of thread. Next, to create the hatching pupa's body, we'll grab in hand a large-eyed peacock stick and trim from its middle a single, long, wide-stemmed hurl. And we'll carefully strip the hurl from tip to butt of all of its iridescent fluff by either using a pencil eraser or by simply scraping the fluff free using our thumbnail. Once cleaned, we'll tie the quill in tip first at the back end of our fly using a few snug thread wraps. And once bound, we'll then advance our bobbin forward along the hook shank, working in smooth progressive fashion until we reach that comfortable stop located close to but not crowding our hook eye. Once there, we'll go ahead and lift then trim the excess lemon wood duck away neatly at its base with a quick careful snip. Next, we'll begin winding forward along the hook shank our clean stripped peacock quill. Working smoothly and progressively in hand over hand fashion using close, carefully controlled, tight and abutting turns will create as we go a nice, level, handsomely marked quill body. Again, once we reach that comfortable stop located close to but not crowding our hook eye, we'll neatly tie off our stripped quill using a few snug thread wraps and of course, once secured, we'll go ahead and trim the excess stem away with a quick, careful snip from our scissors. Next, we'll begin advancing in counterwound fashion our green ultra wire rib. Again, working smoothly and progressively towards the hook eye using tightly drawn, steeply angled, but this time evenly spaced turns, we'll continue until we again reach that comfortable stop located close to but not crowding our hook eye, where we'll then go ahead and tie off our wire with a few snug wraps and, of course, trim the excess away neatly. Last, to complete our fly's abdomen, we'll apply a nice, thin coat of clear head cement or glossy lacquer to the wound quill and rib, ensuring as we apply that our cement distributes evenly along the body's entire length, both top and bottom, and around the abdomen as well. Once coated, we'll take a moment to let the cement dry. Next, to create the hatching pupa's thorax, we'll again grab our large-eyed peacock stick and trim from it three or four finely tapered hurls. We'll then go ahead and tie those trimmed hurls firmly in place, tips first, just a short distance behind our comfortable resting stop. And once snugly bound, we'll then twist our peacock hurls round to help strengthen the delicate stems and prevent them from breaking. Once spun taut, we'll begin wrapping a nice thickly shouldered thorax by taking three or four carefully controlled winds around the hook shank with our tightly twisted hurls. Once satisfied, we'll tie our peacock off using a few snug thread wraps and naturally, once secured, we'll go ahead and lift then trim the excess hurl away neatly at its base. To create our soft tackle collar, we'll pluck a single well-marked, appropriately sized Hungarian partridge feather We'll prepare it like we do most by quickly trimming the feather's tip and stripping the base of the excess fluff. Then with tip facing front and the feather's curved side facing down, we'll go ahead and tie our partridge feather firmly to the hook shank, 
comfortably behind our hook eye using a few nice, tight, well-placed turns of thread. Of course, to prevent our hackle from pulling free while folding or wrapping, we'll take a moment to bend the feathers trim to tip backwards along the hook shank before installing a final few snug locking wraps. Once secured, we'll next briefly pre-fold our hackle by gently sweeping and pinching the barbules rearward from the stem. Once adequately folded, we'll go ahead and begin winding our collar by taking two or three nice, sparse, carefully controlled turns with our hackle. And of course, once satisfied, we'll then carefully tie off our partridge feather with a few well-placed, tightly drawn thread wraps. Once firmly secure, we'll then trim away the excess stem closely at its base with a quick, careful snip. Last, we'll go ahead and build ourselves a nice, neat thread head. And once happy, we'll go ahead and finish our fly using a standard whip knot. A brief snug pull to ensure our whip knot holds, then we'll trim our thread away neatly with a close careful snip from our scissors. One last gentle sweep and perhaps a gentle pinch too to help dress and tame our collar. And we'll end this fly like we do most with a nice level application of high quality clear glossy head cement. Well guys, there you have it, our good friend Ellie's olive hatching pupa tight start to finish. This spruced up little soft tackle flat catches fish like you wouldn't believe. A dynamite producer not only here in New England, but anywhere both cold waters and finicky trout can be found, we very much hope you'll give tying and fishing Ellis's hatching pupa a try. Hey gang, thanks again for tuning in. Please remember to visit us on the web for all your fly fishing and fly tying needs, and as always, snug wraps and tight lines to all.